be tough to draw up a better script for the Twins in game one of this doubleheader in Detroit. Let's bring it down on today's Locked On Twins postcast. You are Locked On Twins postcast, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, your team every day. And welcome to another edition of our Lockdown Twins postcast. Today is Tuesday, May 31st. I'm the host of Lockdown Twins, Nash Walker, here with writer and reporter at Access Twins, Brandon Warren. Let's play two today. We'll break down game one between the Twins and Tigers. First, I want to tell you about Athletic Greens. It is lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free. Athletic Greens is great for you. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Head over to athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Brandon Twins win game one. Devin Smeltzer is very good again. The offense comes out firing. And as I said, it's hard to drop a better script for this one. Yeah, uh, you got to be impressed with what Smelter has done so far. Uh, coming out, striking out zero, that start a couple starts ago, it kind of felt like maybe he was teetering on unsustainability. And granted, he's not going to sustain a 1.50 ERA as he has right now, but he's given them a chance to win every time he goes out. And that's all you can ask for him. So at this point, I feel like you have to give him at least another start or two to show that, um, you know, he isn't who he looks like right now, which I think he isn't that good but he's looked so good and they've got enough injuries i think they can keep running him out there offense gets going and we've talked about him a lot this year anthony the sanchez is a monster at the plate he stays rolling gary sanchez three-run homer hitting the ball hard everywhere and my expectations for gary brandon coming into this year is you know 25 30 homers stay healthy play a strong catcher and i think he's done that what do you think of gary at least in the last couple of weeks we haven't had a chance to, to check in on him yeah, I mean, I feel like he's kind of nudging Ryan Jeffers out of the picture at catcher on ter in terms of uh, who's on the long side of this quasi-platoon. Uh, you know, we did see uh, Jeffers DH yesterday, which I think surprised a lot of people. It was the first twin to DH and hit ninth in, a, in quite some time. But you, you you have no choice but to be impressed with Gary. I think the, the defensive woes he had in New York are either one, overblown, or two, in the past. He hasn't been perfect. He had a a ball yesterday that he maybe should have caught that didn't. I think it was like 97 miles per hour and it drifted on him. But at the same time, you know, he has not, he's not looked out of sorts, which is pretty much all you want from a guy who's more or less your second catcher. So, um, you know, would you like to have an on base percentage above 300? Sure. But he's doing everything else you want your catcher to do. And um, that includes dropping bombs. Max Kepler returns to the lineup has a great day at the dish in game one. They needed him to come back. Carlos Correa to the COVID IL. Twins are banged up all over the roster. Good news, though. Sonny Gray sounds like might miss the injured list. I was expecting a lineup that looked a lot uglier today, given the injuries, given Correa. But they came out firing right away, Brandon, and Kepler was a big part of that. Doesn't it feel like, though, when we think they're going to have the Sunday afternoon lineup, Joe Maurer resting the day uh, after a night game, and then they come out and score eight runs. It just always seems to work that way. Excuse me. And this was no exception. Um, you know, multi-hit game for Kepler, multi-hit game for Rise, but otherwise balanced offensive effort. And this is kind of what you come to expect from this offense. And I want to, too, I want to put a little bit of focus on Jermaine Palacios in his MLB debut. He did two things that I thought were very impressive. He took a walk, and it was uh, Jim Codd even brought it up, and a, a tremendous take towards the end of that plate appearance. And then on a play at short, Rather than panic or, you know, his first play, you kind of have that anxiety of making that first play. Rather than play back, backhand that ball deep in the hole and probably not have a chance to throw Candelario out, he does, uh, he rounds it, picks it up, perfect throw. And, you know, he didn't look like a guy making his debut today. I know he didn't get a hit, but he looked fairly comfortable in his own skin, which is, uh, is surprising for a player who's been in the minor leagues so long, but has never played in the big leagues. What separates, I think, the Twins and Tigers is, yes, at the top, the Tigers don't have players like Correa and Buxton. Javier Baez can be that guy at times. But I think the depth, and you saw that today with Smeltzer, with Palacios making plays, 
depth in the lineup for the Twins, getting it done. That's what separates these two teams, I think, right now. But in this series, Brandon, they're knotted up at one. This felt like a game that the Twins could use to flip and used to flip as soon as, you know, three hours. Well, and the depth too shines in when you consider that the Twins outfield was considered deep enough that Lamont Wade was traded, had a big season with San Francisco, and then look no further than Akil Badu last year as a rookie. So the, the depth, while it didn't pan out last year like we might have hoped or expected, there's a reason why they're doing okay with Trevor Larnick hitting fifth when we didn't expect that on opening day. You know, Gary Sanchez doing some things that we didn't expect. Yeah, the depth is a is a difference in two Guys are taking their lumps. Spencer Torkelson with a sub 700 OPS. Not that you would expect that, but it's hard in the big leagues the first time, no matter how big of a prospect you are. So there's a very clear difference between the haves and the have nots right now. And maybe we overrated the Tigers just a little bit, but we also probably didn't expect Ronnie Garcia making a whole bunch of starts to this point either. So again, it's kind of funny the beginning of the season, you think, you know, a ton of stuff and it turns out, you know, nothing. And, um, you know, we're seeing that here with the Twins winning 60% of their games to the first 50. This opens up an opportunity for today. The Twins get the job done in game one. Now they have game two tonight. The White Sox are in Toronto facing Kevin Gaussman, who's been outstanding this year. They don't have Tim Anderson. They don't have Luis Robert. They don't have guys in their lineup who they would need. And so it feels like the Twins can take game two. Toronto beats the White Sox. This would open up a six-game lead in the Central. Because I think, Brandon... The second half, the Sox schedule is going to lighten up. The Twins schedule is going to get more difficult. So you want to build that lead, and I think they could do that today. Well, and what you kind of hope, too, is that late in the season when this Detroit team sort of sort of figures things out, that's when the Twins have fewer games against them and the White Sox will have more. So you, you would hope then that maybe Spencer Torkelson is looking more like a Rookie of the Year candidate in July and August, as opposed to right now, which he's not. But again, you can only play the schedule in front of you and you got to do your best six games up at this point, heading into June would be huge. I'm not saying teams have never blown six game leads on June 1st. They've blown those on September 1st, but you got to put yourself in a position to have that lead before you can blow it. And they never did that last year. So again, um, you know, big leg up this year compared to last year at this time. I think I posted too on Twitter, the Twins won their 30th game today, May 31st. Last year, it was June 20th. So wow. 20, 21 days off the pace. Not too well, bad. Keep in mind, the season started earlier last year as well. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it was yeah. another week. Yeah, so oh, man, I, I think opening that. day was April 1st last year. So they got an extra yep. week. I mean, that even adds to it. Let's preview game two. Cole Stan's going to make his major league debut as a starter, and he'll take on Joey Wentz, the lefty for Detroit. So, you know, probably we'll see Jose Miranda in the lineup in the second game and a couple shifts for the Twins. But what should Twins fans be looking for out of Sands? Brandon making his first career start. They've seen him out of the bullpen a little bit. At the major league level wasn't great. But what are you looking for today? Well, we can get away from the preemptive Kyle Garlic starting and hitting third against a lefty freakout because I think that's kind of normalized. As far as Sands is concerned, I think what you you start out as a baseline is get through the lineup one time or three innings. Um, hopefully, whichever one happens second because you're not going to get through the lineup and and finish it in in uh, faster than that. But um, you know, the hope then there would be get what you can. Hopefully, he doesn't run into too much danger and then piece it together. I, I was kind of thinking maybe they should have piggybacked Griffin Jacks with him, but then I thought about it and Smeltzer lefty upper eighties, low nineties, and then Jack's a righty who throws a lot harder than he did as a starter. I like the contrast there. So I'll be curious to see if they piggyback him with uh, like a Trevor McGill, or if they just piece it together, you know, get three innings out of Sands, hopefully leave with a lead, a three, two lead, three, one lead, something like that. And then just inning by inning by inning, um, not really where you want to be at this point in terms of the rest of the series and the the games for the next week too, but I'm not sure what else there is as I'm kind of surveying it from 10,000 feet. We've seen the Twins bounce back and, and win games when it looks like things are looking down and it would be just awesome for them to sweep this doubleheader today after the calamity, the adversity, and the losses recently we've seen that didn't look like the team from earlier this year. But the Twins are 30-20. and 20. They've won 10 more games than they've lost, and they've won 30 of their first 50. Brandon, thank you so much. We'll be back for a post game after game two today. Very exciting. Can't wait for that. Ryan Carpenter said, I'm looking sexy. I'm sure. Hey, Brandon, hey, 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 Brandon, hey, 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 hey. We're trying to keep it clean here. Carp, so, Carp, Carp needs to respect me. 
<laughs> first and foremost. Okay. Anyway, yeah, no. Um, and I too, I wanted to say <laughs> nice bounce back from yesterday, which was like the junior or diet version of that tough game in Oakland last year. Just felt like everything unraveled. Great bounce back game right here, showing that they weren't going to let it stretch out. Let's roll it into game two. Brandon, thank you, sir.